And now, for this week's State of Trade in Star Citizen. Traders felt the squeeze of outpost issues this week as several terminals refused to show commodities for sale or purchase. While certain outposts like Hicks Research on Selen have been permanently disconnected, outposts such as Woodruff and Arc Corp 157 experience intermittent outages throughout the week, forcing traders onto less optimal routes. The posted workaround of needing to revisit multiple times or to simply wait has left many traders stuck at these outposts, with many seeing a lack of results. An issue council report can be found below. We are currently halfway through Alien Week. Shoring up the lack of alien ships seen during Invictus, CIG has made various ships available for sale. This includes the legendary Banu Merchantman, which is currently not in-game. Banu Merchantman owners are currently issued a Drake Caterpillar and Banu Defender as loaner ships, until their actual vessel comes online. And now for market data. Keep in mind that due to the before-mentioned issue with outposts, data may be skewed as some locations could not be verified multiple times. In the metals market, Agrisium sharply fell to 23.67 on both Daymar and Lyria down from last week's high of 24.69. While still experiencing minimal availability, the sudden price drop in Agrisium shows a declining interest in the metal, as it edges closer towards its base pricing of 22.50. Titanium experienced a roller coaster of price differences this week. While deposits at Tram and Myers held to a predictable 7.87, Ariel and Lyria saw frequent drops to near base pricing before spiking during peak trading hours. Bezdek and Lathan both returned to a base price of 7.10 in the middle of the week. However, Lathan rose dramatically to 7.74 during the weekend, while its neighbor Bezdek remains near base pricing. Deposits on Lyria fell to 7.55 to the 7.18 range, far below the previous week's high of 7.95. This surprising drop was not anticipated and may be a result of server maintenance or outposts temporarily not showing commodities for trade. Gold shows a repeat of the previous week's trends. Gold held at 5.85 on Daymar, down slightly from a previous 5.87. Deposits at Kudre Ore fell to 5.66, with more than usual availability. Prices on Aberdeen and Lyria held firm to a base of 5.41 and see no supply issues. Tungsten continues to surge, especially around Crusader. Daymar deposits showed a repeat price of 3.80 with availability at a minimum. Deposits around Arc Corp saw brief and minimal price increases, but quickly returned to a base price of 3.55. Aluminum shows no changes and little movement this week, continuing a base price of 1.11 UEC. LegalVice sees interesting changes this week. After midweek maintenance concluded, Distilled Spirits reported a new low and unverified base price of 4.06 on Daymar, with Selen seeing similar pricing. This is drastically lower than the previous base of 4.20, leading to a profit margin of 28% if purchased at 4.06. However, outposts supplying Distilled Spirits were heavily affected by outages this week, and prices returned to the 4.25 range. If 4.06 is a new base price, then distilled spirits may see a surge in popularity in the future. Stim saw a repeat of previous trends, holding at 2.99 on Yela at Deacon's Research, with deposits around Microtech holding at or near base pricing of 280. With Hicks on Selen still offline, Deacon's on Yela is the sole provider of Stims in Crusader. We regret to report that State of Trade does not have relevant data on illegal goods at this time. Gases see Acetine experiencing a shift in its usual pricing. Eda saw prices spiking as high as 7.91, up from last week's high of 7.79. Curiously, Acetine returned to a near base pricing of 7 UEC on Walla and Lyria. Prices on Yela both rose and fell, jumping to 7.75 during peak trading before returning to base pricing and hitting their supply cap. Traders interested in moving Astatine are advised to visit Arc Corp and Crusader deposits in favor of Eda near Hurston. Aside from minor increases, Chlorine maintained a base price of 1.3 at all locations, down from last week's high of 1.41 seen on Yela. 
Fluorine once again held to a base price of 2.35, seeing expected low sale prices at Deacon's Research and Port Olisar. With Hicks and sometimes even Deacon's not available for trade, Fluorine has flooded Port Olisar, resulting in a continued lower sale price of 2.80. Traders in Crusader looking to move Fluorine in bulk should consider a Grim Hex, where a base sale price of 2.95 is easier to find. Hydrogen sees little movement except on Yela, where prices fell to a base of 0.90 down from last week's high of 0.99. ArtCorp 157 saw brief and minor price increases during peak trading. Iodine once again sees little interest and no change, holding to a base of 0.35. In the mineral market, Laronite rose to 27.86 with a surprising low of 27.02 at ArtCorp 056. This was quickly capitalized on and the outpost's low price rose considerably during peak trading. Availability has been typical and ships as small as the Cutlass have struggled to fill their cargo holds. Laronite has a base price of 24.10, which has not been seen since before Invictus launch week. Diamond sees a slight drop in movement on Magda and Walla. Magda saw a high of 6.41, with prices returning to a base of 5.41 during off-peak hours. Deposits on Walla also returned to base pricing, down from last week's high of 6.38. With prices dropping across the system, Tram and Myers may see overall less traffic. Barrel has returned to its base price of 4.06 on Daymar, down from the previous week's high of 4.14. Movement has subsided as traders dump the commodity in favor of more profitable cargoes. Corundum sees little movement as well and holds to a base price of 2.3 down from last week's high of 2.40 seen at Tram and Myers. Quartz follows the same trend and sees minimal movement, holding to a base price of 1.25 at all outposts. The price of scrap fell at Crew L1 and Grim Hex this week, dropping to the 1.47 range. This is down from a previous price of 1.54. Prices at most R&Rs held to the 1.35 to 1.36 range. Medical supplies in the Microtech system fell to 16.87, down from the previous week's high of 17.20. Some outposts actually returned to a base price of 15.75. Supplies on Yela fell as low as 16.15. The drop in price can be attributed to Deacon's research being frequently unavailable for trade during the week, making outposts around Microtech the sole provider of medical supplies at times. Hicks' research on Selen is still disconnected from the trade network. With Microtech supplies being the most plentiful, New Babbage has been overwhelmed with the commodity, and bulk traders have had long wait times to unload their wares. Agricultural supplies see little notable movement and hold to a base price of 1 UEC. Processed food follows the same and holds at a base price of 1.21 UEC. And now for next week's forecast. Prices of titanium should return to near base pricing during off-peak hours. If trading on Ariel, Check Bezdek for the lower price. Astatine should see lower prices around Arccorp. Grim Hex may see minor drops in the sale price of Fluorine if the terminal connection issue continues to plague Deacon's research, with Olisar seeing the lowest pricing. Distilled Spirits may surge in popularity again if its new reported base price holds true. Medical supplies to New Babbage will continue to flood the market. And now for this week's trading tip. Change up your route. Clever pirates will hang around ports to scan your cargo, allowing them to make an educated guess on where you've been and where you might go again, giving them time to set up before you arrive back on the scene. Minimize the chance of this happening by switching what you carry and where you get it from. That's it for this week's State of Trade. Until next time, keep on trucking.